Nicolas Cage versus a bunch of crazy bee women and he wears a silly bear suit. What's not to love? The Wicker Man sucks. I mean the original. Oh! All right, all right. I'm joking. Sort of. I get why people like the 1973 Wicker Man. I do, but I just personally don't find it to be that enjoyable. It's got that early 70s sensibilities about it, which a lot of the time is about as exciting as watching paint dry. A lot of its folksy songs drive me up the wall, and it's a very dreary experience overall. And the title is kind of a giant spoiler. I mean, if you're watching this and you somehow don't know how it ends, but a giant wicker man hasn't shown up yet, you kind of gotta figure that's gonna play into the ending and be less than favorable for the main character. There are obviously a lot of things that the original does much better than the doofy 2006 Cage make, but overall I find the silly Nicolas Cage one much more entertaining. One factor for this is, is that I just really can't stand the type of story the Wicker Man tells, which is that kind of secluded society which either shuns or doesn't use much technology and has a bunch of stupid rules and beliefs that they expect everyone to immediately be on board with. They're all so smug in their stupid little idiot beliefs and BS that you just want someone to come in and ruin their moronic setup and not take it very seriously. Which is why I enjoy this story immensely more with Nicolas Cage around doofing the entire thing up. Nicolas Cage just feels so immensely miscast to be here, I can't help but love it. A lot of his scenes just feel like he's taking the piss out of it or not giving a shit. I'm a policeman. See my badge? I do not get this place. Oh, you will. In time, perhaps. Perhaps it is time for you to stop bullshitting me, okay? And even though this movie has Nicolas Cage in there being all... Nicolas Cage, the 2006 Wicker Man is actually a pretty faithful remake. It's not executed very well, but it was pretty spot on in a lot of areas. There are a surprising amount of lines that are almost taken verbatim from the original, and some lines you just gotta cross out apple and put in honey. Well, don't you see that killing me is not going to bring back your apples? Killing me won't bring back your goddamn honey! However, one of the major driving forces in the original Wicker Man was the main character, Sergeant Howie's faith in Christianity being put up against the pagan beliefs of the inhabitants of Summer Isle, which is a dynamic completely dropped in the Cage version. Cage never really mentions his faith at all, and the pagans have been turned into crazy bee ladies. <laughs> Boy, I never get tired of crazy bee ladies. This audiobook's a lot. So, one of the apparently really important additions to the story the Cage make had to do was add this plot about a little brat who drops her doll out of the car. But of course, Cop Cage is gonna return it because he's just such a great guy. Sorry. We need to be careful with our things, don't we? So everyone else can be safe too, right? Somebody stop that. After I went through all that hard work to pick up your doll, you make me do it again. I hope you die. Uh-oh, spaghetti Ha ha ha! It was my evil plan to get hit by a truck and not die somehow! In retrospect, that's a really stupid plan! I love the little brat just stares at Cage blankly as he tries to rescue her while she thinks she's immune from explosions. <laughs> then again, blowing up is a much better faith than being in any more of this movie, right? Well, she doesn't get to get out of it that easily, as Cage is gonna daydream about this constantly! Because it's apparently super important, despite not particularly doing anything besides forming a very loose connection with little girls. So? That about sums it up. Wait, did I miss the not the bees line? Was I looking away? Guys down the station are saying you might resign or something. 
that true? Because that'd be great. Is the scene over yet? So they still never found the bodies from that car, right? No. Well, who were they? Uh -huh. Well, that's weird. Is that going to make sense later? Nope, it's certainly going to make more nonsense later, but it's mostly weird just to be weird, which is something this remake loves to just keep doing. Weird was definitely a theme in the original Wicker Man as well, but there's more of a story purpose to it. The pagan cultists all had these strange things they were teaching and did, like shoving frogs down little girls' throats, but they didn't just do it to be odd. What added to the off-puttingness of this was that the weirdos actually believed in all these stupid things they were doing. You know, I keep praising that movie I apparently don't like that much compared to the bad Cage one that I do. But in contrast to the original, you have a scene in this one where Cage just comes across a room with one of the women naked covered in bees. Why would she be doing this? Who knows? I do kind of appreciate that it's there as it adds a nice what the hell moment, but there's no point to it. Cage could have maybe just overheard something about some of the bee holes believing in some stupid cure involving a bunch of bees covering you or something and then later have this be the payoff. But as it is, like a lot of these bits, it feels like they just realized they had forgotten to actually add a bunch of the stranger elements to the story so they just threw them in later without having any real reason to them. It's a black comedy, stupid. Don't overthink it. Oh. Edward, I know that we haven't spoken in a few years and things ended badly. I got a letter. The name on the envelope said B. It's ridiculous. It can possibly be true. A B can't write a letter. But please, Cage, come find my daughter on Crazy Bee Island! I'm there, Bee Babe. Man, look at Cage's ex's calligraphy. That is some perfect. Guess there's not much else to do on Crazy Bee Island than practice calligraphy. I live on Summer's Isle. Oh yeah, it's not Summer Isle anymore. It's Summer's Isle, because apparently the extra S would make it easier for Americans to say. Yes, that was seriously the reasoning. A tiny place in Puget Sound. I doubt you've heard of it. Great, my ex is on an island full of hipsters. Hello? Hi, this phone call doesn't actually have a point. It's just another weird thing to happen. The plot thickens. Didn't even know you had a plot. Oh, we don't. Not an original one, anyway. We were engaged. What? Did you just say engaged? No. Oh. Give her a call. 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 I already tried that, but guess what? There's no phone service on Summer Zone. Except for creepy, staticky, incomplete calls. She probably had to hook a phone up to a bee for that. Anyway, his ex's missing girl looks a lot like evil roadkill girl. Why? It was symbolism. He was mad. Okay, I get the parallel that he feels like he needs to go save this little girl, but that's not exactly necessary in this story. He would probably still feel compelled to go look for her without roadkill girl and that doesn't particularly impact any of the story except for hilarious asides like this <laughs> are we supposed to take that seriously come on cage makes it over to suspicious isle by bribing who is apparently the only person who makes runs back and forth from there but they immediately let him know that they don't care for out-of-towners coming in and being all curious about their thrashing, bloody, human-sized sacks. What's in the bag? A shark or something? Yeah, they just went over to the sea and popped a shark in a sack. That's the most likely scenario. Go on, take a peek. Oh, I guess I'm not curious about what's in there anymore. Bye. Wow, searching for a missing little girl and people are leaving with a bloody body-sized sack and you don't actually check out what's in it. Setting the bar well for this movie. Must be a ladies' night. Yup. Are you the barmaiden here? I'm Sister Beach, yes. Sister Bitch, more like. Yes, I win. 
Name's Malus. Ah, yes. Cage's name in this is possibly a reference to the Malus genus of apple trees, which would both serve as a reference to the original and play into the fact that they are pollinated by bees. Or it could be the dumbest thing ever, as IMDb suggests, that it's a mashup of male and phallus. Yeah. Welcome. Do not. You're as beautiful as the day you left me. Awkward. <clears throat> I think I'll have a drink first, as long as I'm not intruding. <laughs> oh, you are, but it's okay. Glad he's decided that drinking is more important than going up and talking to his ex about her missing girl. But ugh, it's not like that's the entire reason he's here or anything. This here is mead, a brew of honey, herbs, and whatnot. Whoa, I can really taste the whatnot. I think you ought to know. I think you all should know that I love shoulder pads. Could you be any more annoying? I've made a huge mistake. Could you leave? Oh, man. Be careful and believe nothing that you see or hear. I don't believe you, Trees. You're liars. You know, traditionally, the guy gets his ring back when the fiancé runs away. I still wear it. That's nice. I seriously want it back, though. I didn't... Um... No. No. Look at... What in the hell happened to you? I was scared, and I ran back home. It's quite a home, by the way. We're different here. That's our motto here on Summer's Isle. We got it off a shirt at Hot Topic. Anywho, time for some more weird stuff like two blind twins that talk in unison. Will Sister Summer's Isle bless us with her presence? Wow, pretty spooky, huh, folks? They're building up to something with them. I uh, know they're not. Oh, hey, don't have the shifting of the balance of magic sex with Ray Liotta. I wouldn't know about that. I'm totally gonna kick your ass later. For more spooky dooky nonsense, Cage then remembers seeing that little blonde girl on the boat, but this time walks up to her before she gets run over by the water truck. <laughs> Well, it doesn't make sense or add anything new to the story, but it is still funny seeing her get run over by a truck on a boat the second time. He continues remembering things the way they weren't when Roadkill Girl and Mom suddenly disappear from the car! There is literally no meaning to this! It's like hearing someone you don't really care about's boring dream from last night involving people you don't really know. Cage then chases after the little blonde girl. You know what? I bet he's gonna find her here and then everything's just gonna be alright for an hour ten. Rowan? Rowan, are you a pigeon now? Rowan? More like Little Red Bratting Hood. Do you recognize this girl? No. <laughs> Can you leave? Will you take me with you? You just put me in an awkward position now. I hate you. This remake has no teeth in some ways too, as the weird pagan things going on around the island kind of push some strange boundaries. Like where they had their little bone hinge set up, where there were a bunch of naked people screwing and stuff, and then in cage time, some pregnant ladies walk by, which is apparently quite strange. Will you tell us what man represents in his purest form? Phallic symbol, phallic symbol. <laughs> School's really changed since I was a kid. Anyway, just call me male phallus. I'm a policeman. See my badge? Also, see my lack of giving a shit? I was unaware any of my girls needed arresting. Well, now you do. Whose desk is this? <laughs> Never expected him to notice an obvious empty desk. Or maybe I did. Maybe this is my plan all along. I don't know. This is stupid. What? Wow, that crow was being remarkably quiet in that desk. One of my favorite lines from the original is when Sergeant Howie finds Rowan's name on the attendance after Ibrahim claimed to not know her. You're liars. You are despicable little liars. I think you ought to know. And you are the biggest liar of all. But now it's time for that line to get caged. You little liars. And you're the biggest liar of them all. I am warning you. You tell me another and I'll arrest you myself. That is a promise, Miss... 
Sister Rose. Of course. Another plant. You're a planted liar. Class dismissed. You mean that Rowan is dead? We never use that word here. Oh yeah, they don't ever use that word here, do they? Let me make sure you're ready for the day of tomorrow. The time of death? Well, to be fair, he said dead and she said death. <laughs> it's stupid. Is there uh, some church near here? Yep, down the hill. Didn't I just speak with you? How weird. She looks just like the teacher. Is that going anywhere? No. Hollow ground. More like liar ground. But they put it there. I didn't. Who's that? Uh, I didn't think that far ahead with my lies. I knew it! You liar! You're all liar! Rowan is alive. You ever stop to think that maybe Rowan's lying about being alive? I do not know that our daughter is going to be okay. Our daughter? Wow! This is going to affect me almost precisely zero percent. Seriously, he still thinks more about Roadkill Brat than he actually thinks about being a father. Wow, so you two had a whole half a room? Looks like you two were living it up like bees. So this is where you last saw Ron? Hmm. You last saw her in this drawer? You're a liar! Was Ron depressed at all? Did you make her watch this movie? Rowan? You know, considering all the hallucinations this guy has, I'm starting to think he wasn't quite the right man for this job, as he might not be all that stable. Probably thinks he's a vampire. A younger woman was chosen to personify fertility, and then killed in a blood ritual. I wonder if that really works. Ooh, babies in jars! That helps with bees, too! But every time I turn my head, there's something that doesn't make any sense. Well, if you're just gonna review the movie yourself, I guess I'm not needed here. I was happy to leave here. Even though I came back, I wish I hadn't. I wish that I stayed and made a life with you. Now I know you're a liar! Oh, little red bitching hood, am I right? Let me give you a hand. <laughs> My work here is done. Man, I look cool as shit right now. No, not the beast! Oh. oh, come on. So they put a ton of work into landscaping their fields into giant honeycombs for absolutely no reason? They think that's gonna impress the bees or something? Oh, hey, look at this from really high up. Man, we gotta pollinate the shit over there. Time for Cage to give some serious thought to being a father. Just kidding, what if Roadkill Brat disappeared and there were bees? Please go. Did you use my kit? The, the adrenaline shot? Or? Oh, no. I had to replace most of you with bee parts. I'm a bee! I'm a bee! I'm a bee! I'm a bee! Over an hour in and we finally meet Sister Summer's Isle. It takes so long for her to finally show up and she doesn't make that much of an impact. So when I was first re-watching this one, I couldn't even remember if the remake had an equivalent for Christopher Lee's Lord Summer Isle. Hell, Sister Summer's Isle doesn't even shoot anyone with a golden gun. But you know who shoots? Should have played Sister Summer's Isle? B. Arthur! Seriously though, dumb bee joke aside, it would have been amazing if this was B. Arthur here. They had never cast someone in this for a silly bee joke anyway. Though it was Kate B. Han who played Sister Willow. Hmm. Anyway, they just really didn't do enough with Sister Summer's Isle compared to Lee's ridiculous Lord Summer Isle. He's a much more memorable, eccentric, poofy-haired character who could change his clothes extraordinarily quick. The bees almost did you in. Yeah. Yeah? I hear you were expecting me. 
Why is that? Well, we gotta put someone in that giant wicker man. I mean, you must have noticed that by now. I kind of wondered this in both movies. How did they keep the giant wicker man hidden on their dinky little cult island? You'd think something like that might kind of stand out a bit, especially as the main character flew to the island in both versions. These are people with kind of limited resources, so I don't know what they were hiding this under. I believe you're looking for a child? I might have found her. Excellent. Not exactly. You're the child! You just got caged. You don't seem very concerned. No. I've done much better roles than this. All those offerings. To whom exactly? To the great mother goddess. I knew it. This was the end goal of feminism the whole time. A bee island! Uh-oh, I mentioned feminism! <laughs> Men are what? Second class citizens? Bee gate. It's about ethics in honeycombs. The men are a very important part of our little colony. Breeding, you know. Yeah, but I don't see any dick hedges like in the original Wicker Man, so I guess they aren't that important. Quite a little racket you've got going for yourself here. Breeding? Sounds like inbreeding to me. You just got caged. We procreate to assure ourselves of worthy offspring. The strongest, the finest. Well, if we learned anything from the Wrong Turn series, inbreeding is exactly how you get that. What if someone just happens to have a boy? What do you do then? That depends. Yeah, depends diapers. Perhaps it is time for you to stop bullshitting me, okay? <laughs> okay, Cage, you so don't belong here. And that's exactly why you belong here. Especially when a little girl's life is at stake. My little girl. I'm sure you've guessed. From reading the script like I did. As a matter of fact, it isn't. Murder is murder. You wackos. 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 <sighs> My daughter's a doll, the offspring of a lar. Well, time to think of Roadkill Girl one more time because of dolls and water and stuff. I don't know. <laughs> of course, my partner was made of bees the entire time. It all makes sense. Perhaps there is no moral to this story. Exactly. It's just a bunch of stuff that happened. How'd it get burned? How to get burned? I, how to get burned? How to get burned? It's just such a brilliant overreaction to a situation that doesn't really call for it that makes how to get burned so wondrous. Cage Malice Phallus goes back to Summer's Isle's pad for some more random stuff, like a stung up dude laying around on a bed. The before mentioned woman sitting around naked covered in bees, apparently hoping someone would break in and see this, otherwise she went to a lot of work for nothing. And then stupid Summer's Isle herself laying around in her honeycomb themed bedroom. Like what purpose is there to any of this? Does this aid them in any way? Did Summer's Isle convince the bee women that the bees will produce more if she has a bee-themed bedroom to laze about in? It's just a bunch of stuff that happened. He's gone now. Excellent. Oh, so Miss Bee Burns' plan didn't call for Cage to find her elaborate bee room, even though it's quite amazing he somehow missed it as it's just down the hall? We're all preparing. For what? Celebration? Of death. We never use that word here. Get off the bike. Get off the bike. Step away from the bike. <laughs> Take your stupid mask. I'll wait for a more dignified costume to steal. It is he. There's your, uh, main payoff to the Wonder Twins, I guess. Wasn't that good? Do you have permission to charge in here and just just No! I don't need anybody's goddamn permission! You have my permission to stay out of the fucking way! You know, as great as the not the bees line is, I think a lot of Cage's lines in this are just about as hilarious. So now the bee women have killed their delivery man because... Uh, he brought Cage here, and that's not what they wanted. Except him coming here is exactly what they wanted, and you'd think Delivery Man would have had to have been in on it with them, as he was pretty much the only way for Cage to get here. 
Either way, killing this guy doesn't particularly benefit them as they now just made it harder for them to export their honey. Which is the entire reason they're doing any of this, isn't it? You look a bit worse for wear now, don't you? <laughs> Excellent. Round two, fight. Superb, outstanding, finisher, well done. Cage wins. Reality. Everyone, do the idiot through the bee fields! Da, 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 da. How'd I get bad? How'd I get bad? How'd I get bad? That's right, it's time for Cage to punch a woman in a bear suit, the second most beloved scene from this movie, but then he's betrayed by his own daughter. You have come of your own free will to keep this appointment with the wicker man. I knew this movie was called that for a reason. What we require is a stranger, yet one who is connected to us. Connected by blood. Okay, daughter, you go have a kid with some guy in case we have a bad bee harvest some year. What if he had died in the years in between knocking up Willow in this? I mean, he's a cop who has weird delusions almost every five minutes. Could have happened very easily. And here's the payoff to some of the stuff that kept popping up, which is a very blink and you'll miss it moment. Especially as this addition does not aid the story or the bee woman's plot to get Cage here. His partner, roadkill mom, and brat were all a part of this. His partner didn't even do anything to get him here, except possibly deliver his ex's letter. So she became a cop just to possibly deliver a letter someday? Seems like a good use of time. Or does she somehow cover up every death on the island she sometimes lives on? Guess that won't be super suspicious or anything. Hey, you know how Cage went to that super weird island? Well, he's disappeared forever, but it's got nothing to do with that island. I know because... reasons. Oh, okay. And they staged these two not actually becoming roadkill through magic, I guess. I don't know how you plan to head-on collision people in a semi-truck and then somehow make sure that they are perfectly okay after. But it was all worth it because... It would make him want to look for a little girl a little bit more? Maybe? Because you really need to see people die before you'd want to do that. And if Willow had just put in, by the way, it's your daughter too, into her letter, I think that would have pretty much guaranteed that he would come. But oh no, we need to sacrifice sense for that dramatic wet fart of a reveal later on. But at least this really justifies all the flashbacks. No, no. He still had absolutely no good reason to be constantly thinking of that. This is murder! And you're doing it for nothing! Oh yeah, did you know that the theatrical cut of this movie doesn't even have its most iconic scene in it? Yeah, it just completely skips over Cage's torture and just has some of the lines from it played over as they're walking him over to the Wicker Man. We can't have that now, can we? So let's flip on over to the unrated cut. This is murder! And you're doing it for nothing! Killing me won't bring back your goddamn honey! But I know it will. Miscast actors burning up in a giant wicker man makes bees go pollination crazy. Makes about as much sense as anything in this, I suppose. They also break Cage's knees here, which honestly makes the Wicker Man scene make a lot more sense than in the original, as it kind of seemed like Sergeant Howie could probably break out of this burning up Wicker Man if he really wanted to. No, not the bees! Not the bees! Ah! I'm my eyes! My eyes! Ah! Let me tell you something, Nicholas Cage. Once those bees hit 80 miles per hour, you're gonna see some serious shit. But no one said that yet. 
Here's a point about the not the bees scene, though, as they were all upset at Cage for killing a bee earlier on, but here they are forcing a bunch of bees to sting him. And guess what? They're all gonna die after that. That seems a little backwards with their beliefs and slightly less than beneficial. So par for the course at this point. Oh, run! No, run, don't put it down! You are so grounded, little messy! Oh, and in case Cage wasn't enough, they've also thrown in a few more animals to really appease the bees, I guess. Let's take a picture because no one will ever look into a police officer disappearing on our island of stupidity! The unrated cut ends here after the ultimate burn on Cage, but in the theatrical cut, we get a bonus scene where Lily Sobieski and friends seduce a couple of guys, one of which is new style Tommy Wiseau himself, James Franco. It's like hardly any normal people here. <laughs> What a story. And speaking of, they kind of tried to say that this movie was always intended as a black comedy, just like Tommy Wiseau did with The Room. And I believe that just about the same here. Now what genre this movie obviously actually is, is a romance. Thanks, YouTube. And that's why this is the greatest Nicolas Cage versus B-Women movie ever. But answer me this. How'd I get bad? How'd I get bad? How'd I get bad? You'd tell me if putting a poo train on my head looks stupid, wouldn't you?